How crazy is that? I just spent Tuesday afternoon, or is it Wednesday? No, Tuesday afternoon in my backyard uh, showing people how to sleep in a tent. My, if my neighbors could see me right now, they'd think I'm crazy. Nah, they know I'm crazy. All right, come here, Tika. Okay, hey guys. Marty up north and Tika. Sit, Tika, please. Tika, go away. So, Tika, go away. So, um, today is November, uh, let, me, let me get this straight. Today is November 27th, and uh, the, I'm in my backyard. So, two weeks ago, uh, not even two weeks ago, ten days ago, um, Evan and I did a three-day, two-night hike uh, along the elbow uh, river a little elbow and uh, we were overnight and it was minus 20 on the first night and I didn't actually document a lot of the setup during that trip because it's actually hard to do when it's minus 20 minus 20 is very dangerous the batteries keep dying you get cold and things like that but anyway so what I want to do today is I'm gonna set up here in my yard in the relative safety of, uh, of my uh, property uh, and I'm going to set up a winter camp to show, I, I've seen a slew of other videos, I'm going to show you what's possible, how you can extend your, um, your summer gear and make it work in the winter. But you need to do a few things differently to make it work in the winter. I'm going to get a, actually I'm just going to, I brought a tem, uh, thermometer outside. Right now it is minus 12 Celsius. So in Fahrenheit, that's uh, about 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And I saw a couple of videos of people who were talking about the fact that they look at the forecast. Well, let me tell you something. It, here in the mountains, when it, where I hike generally in the Rockies, um, if you're gonna go out and venture out in the Rockies, you need to be prepared to face minus 25 degrees Celsius. And that's whether or not you have a stove with you or anything else you have to be prepared to deal with a storm and a minus 25 degrees Celsius I don't care if I look at the forecast right now and the forecast says that for the next 10 days or next two days it's going to be minus 10 I would not venture out with gear that is only suitable to minus 10 that's an insane uh, preposition so now if I look at the forecast and it says it's going to be minus 20 minus 25 I won't go it's too dangerous you know there's too many things that can go wrong when it's minus 25 uh, mechanical breakdowns uh, breakdowns in gear uh, loss of fuel things like that can make the trip turn dangerous very quickly so if the forecast says it's minus 25 I'm not going but if the forecast says minus 10 or minus 15 Celsius yes I'm going but I am going to take uh, the gear with me that is relevant for minus 25 regardless. And I need to be prepared to stay overnight in the bush. It's already cold enough that uh, Tika wanted inside. And as I spend a little more time out here and I look at the thermometer, it is now showing minus 13 and there isn't too much of a wind chill. I'm actually in, uh, I'm in my backyard. I'll show you where I'm in a pond but the pond's frozen right now. My house, I came down here and I'm in my pond. A uh, couple of rules of thumb that I want to talk about when, uh, when winter camping. And again, it's mostly applicable to here. Down in the US, it's slightly different. But first things first, um, you need to plan on about, I'd say 25 to 30% more gear than what you normally bring in the summer for the same trip. So you'll see out here uh, today, you need, um, you definitely need more food because staying warm is a function of uh, eating more calories helps. You definitely need more uh, sleeping gear. You need a, 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 regardless, a better sleeping bag, one rated for colder temperatures, which is gonna be heavier, or you bring in two sleeping bags. Uh, generally speaking, if you have a four season tent, it's a heavier tent. And then you need additional things, additional tools, like a shovel will help, uh, definitely additional clothing, um, 
more fuel because you can't you know you, you, you everything is colder and you 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 need more fuel you might bring a, a stove whatever so generally speaking in the winter for the same trip that you would do in the summer count on 30 percent more gear that's one thing secondly you won't travel as far no matter what you try to do because you have more gear you will slow down but you will also slow down because of the snow the ice and things like that so count on I would say my experience is count on being almost 50% slower so if you do a normal uh, 10 mile day uh, 20 kilometer day in the summer then in the winter you're gonna come down to a five six mile day or 10 kilometer day which is which is good don't be over ambitious and keep in mind here in the northern latitudes the Sun doesn't come up until 830 and then it goes down at 4 so we're talking eight hours of daylight and you know uh, uh, 16 hours of uh, darkness and because you run out of daylight you don't have as much time to hike because you want to get to your camp while you still have daylight and there's two reasons for that as soon as the Sun goes down boy those temperatures drop I mean you saw it in the video last week just the Sun dipping behind the mountain could is enough to reduce the temperature by you know three four degrees Celsius and the other thing is um, you run out of daylight so doing things in the dark is more difficult and everything you do takes longer because you'll be stopping constantly to warm up and things like that so if you're gonna hike in winter expect more gear expect heavier loads and consequently don't push yourself to go as far so pick hikes that are um, shorter distances and maybe hikes like we did last weekend where you got a bit of creature comforts at the end of the day you know a picnic table or uh, you know there'll be fire now right but... here you see that uh, with my pack last week I was carrying 34 pounds which is no problem but with a pulk like this I can carry definitely quite a bit more weight it pulls easily so I can increase my weight so uh, and I can go farther so um, definitely strongly recommend a all right pulp. so just so everybody knows I've only been outside about 10 minutes these these four little segments that I videotaped already and the battery is showing dead so I have several batteries in my pockets and uh, I keep them close to my body but just to make this slightly more enjoyable I'm gonna go inside and warm up for a few minutes I wouldn't get that luxury if I was out in the bush but I'm gonna go inside and warm up and change batteries inside instead of yeah, doing it so bad. Outside. minus 13 right now so okay um, couple of things so tools that I brought other than the pulk and uh, so you know two choices for traveling across country in the winter three choices snowshoes skis I like snowshoes and uh, and if you saw last week the trail was very slippery and when the trail is very slippery there's a couple of options um, one option is a micro spike like this so I can just I can just put that over my boot and and that'll give me quite a bit of traction just these micro spikes I like them quite a bit there's all sorts of traction devices but uh, another another version is this one by a company called camp and uh, actually I'll show I'll, I'll, I'll show these inside I'll do uh, closer demonstrations inside and I'll add it to the video but uh, bringing bring this is a this is actually a crampon you'll see it inside it's a full-blown crampon that fits over your boot and has spikes so for walking on snow this is a crampon but the other tool that's very indispensable out here is is a shovel so this is this is a this is actually an avalanche shovel um, it comes apart so you can actually um, stick it in your uh, pack but I'm not gonna take it apart but the avalanche shovel can serve the couple of purposes you're gonna see I'm gonna use it real quick here to clear a spot for the tent if you're really in trouble you could build uh, you can you can build a wall of snow you can do a lot of things with a shovel without having to use your hands and 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 right now my hands already these gloves are going to get wet but that's not that bad a deal I got two three other pairs of gloves but a shovel is a very important winter tool is, uh, oh, there's rocks right there step one is clearing a place for my tent
take very long. That rock is not moving. Now, one thing that happens out here is everything is slower. And you, one thing you have to do in the winter is resist the temptation to always be taking off your gloves. Because if you do that to do things that require dexterity, your hands get cold right away and then they don't warm up. And actually, um, well, I'll, co I'll come back to clothing in a, in a while. So, now, this is my three season tent. And a three season tent is suitable for four season as long as it is uh, fairly solid because the, the problem with a typical two season tent is that it is not designed for very uh, heavy loads. And so if you have a two season tent and it snows overnight, you run the risk of collapsing your tent. So uh, that's where I have several tents and this is my North Face tadpole, which is basically a freestanding tent. And that's the tent that I'm gonna use, uh, that I use in, in winter. Boy, I hope you guys appreciate my passion for this because even doing this outside in the comfort of my yard close to the home is still a challenge. Of course, you're sweating, it's surprising, but Not that cold today. Not for me anyways. Okay, so the tent is first set up real quick. Now I'm gonna put the fly over. Basically the tent is set up and uh, I can't drive stakes in the ground so my only option then is to uh, use rocks or if the snow is deep enough you can cut branches and stick the branches through these uh, hoops um, and, and it'll be pretty secure. Now the other thing that, a, that the other disadvantage of a two season tent is that it's typically uh, got a lot more meshing and meshing is no good in winter because it allows a lot of uh, heat to escape but as long as the meshing is all covered everything's fine and one solution uh, one one possibility is to actually pile up snow against the edges of the tent and build it up a bit so that no air comes in from underneath I won't do the whole tent but I'll show you you know so that I could I can I can secure this down but 
if I if I pile snow like that. In essence, in essence, you can you can further insulate your tent. But up to minus 20 with this tent, in my in this case, I don't need that. So, next step in the tent. Is this this is a an emergency blanket? Now, uh, what this will do is it keeps uh, it reflects heat from your body, and it keeps the ground uh, it it heat from your body will hit that and bounce back up. So it's the first layer that I'm putting down on the ground. This weighs nothing. Uh, another alternative to that is you can go to a hardware store and you can buy it looks similar to this but it's a little thicker it's the insulation for hot water heaters or tanks and it comes in rolls or if you're really cheap you go to the dollar store you people in California would know these and you buy the the screens that go on the windshield on the dash of your car in the summer to try and keep them warm and they're made of the same material and they cost a couple of bucks so you could buy two or three of those and maybe cut them to shape and put them on the ground but that's layer number one is something to reflect heat uh, because the ground is frozen and the ground will suck a lot of heat out of uh, out of your tent and out of your body so that's the first layer the second thing I put on my on the on the floor is one of these simple blue foamies and this one's only three quarter lengths I could uh, the reason it is is because I had cut it for uh, it was for Tika for my dog but this is you know this adds another little layer of insulation between the ground and you so that'll go on there that'll cover the majority of my uh, my back and then I'm gonna put my thermarest on there so put my thermarest or sorry my my foamy partially under my body now if you have one that goes all the way even better and then on top of that I'm putting in my Thermarest, uh, my Neo Air, which as you can see is about two inches thick. So now uh, the heat from my body will be, uh, or this, this will tend to deflate as it gets colder, but it'll take longer for it to get cold. It'll stay warm from the heat of my body and the heat from the ground uh, would have, won't, the cold from the ground won't keep deflating this. So it's a pretty good system. I've tried it. I've been good to minus 20 in this. So mylar blanket, foam, and inflatable mattress. So I got this is a uh, zero degree Celsius sleeping bag and I'll talk a bit more about that in a, in, a, in a minute. I'll change the camera angle, but I'm going to put the zero degree sleeping bag there. And I have a positive temperature rated sleeping bag, a five degree bag that I'm going to put inside of this. So this sleeping bag, uh, the outdoor, outdoor Vitals is a zero degree Celsius, 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And this North Face is a four degree Celsius or 40 degree Fahrenheit. So, um, and, and I'll explain that in a second. Because there's not a pure science around the, the, the and then of course, I'll show you a couple of things. Okay. Let me change the camera angle. I don't know if you can see that, but it is now minus 15. So, 
There's no sun in the sky. Minus 15. Actually, I'm just gonna reorganize a few things here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the sleeping bags. So, <clears throat> it's not a perfect science, but the sleeping bags come with a rating. So what the manufacturers do is they assume a comfortable temperature that people like to sleep in. And, you know, for, I think in Canada, it's about 15 degrees Celsius. In, uh, in the U.S., it's about 60 Fahrenheit. So what, what they're assuming is, you know, if you had no sleeping bag and you're just outside, could you, what temperature could you sleep in comfortably? And so generally speaking, let's, let's say it is, uh, it is, uh, 15 degrees Celsius, 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So if I'm comfortable in 15, and then, then, then they rate the bag. They go, okay, so this bag is actually rated at zero degrees Celsius, which kind of means that at zero degrees Celsius, when it's zero degrees Celsius outside, in this bag, because of your body heat and because of the slow release of your body heat through this bag, this bag will feel like 15 degrees. So you take the temperature rating of the bag and you add the comfortable sleeping temperature. So a zero degree rated bag plus 15 means that when it's zero degrees outside, this will feel like 15. Now, when I take a second bag that's uh, a five degree bag, it means that it provides 10 degrees. So between the 10 and the 15, I'm basically adding 25 degrees of temperature. So if it's zero degrees outside with these two bags, it'll feel like it's 25 degrees, which would be extremely hot, which is the case. If it's only zero degrees outside, freezing, the freezing temperature, with these two bags, I will actually sweat and I will be hot, and I've experienced that. Now, if it's minus 15, and I add 25 degrees, with these two bags, it'll feel like 10 degrees Celsius. Now for me, 10 degrees Celsius, I can sleep in that. I'm, it's not gonna be the most comfortable sleep in the world, but I'm a cold sleeper, so I will sleep well in this. If you're a warm sleeper, meaning you like a lot of heat, even with these two bags, if it's minus 15, minus 20, you're gonna freeze, you're gonna be cold. So this won't work for you, so you're gonna need two zero degree bags or something even bigger. Now. The third layer of so I got I got layers of insulation. I got the bags that trap me in Don't underestimate the value of the clothing you're wearing So when I go to bed at night, I'm going to strip down and I'm going to put on a pair of fleece and a and a synthetic shirt And that will add a little bit of warmth But I'm also going to sleep with this on my head And by the way I took off the fur hat and I put this on because the fur was too hot But if I put this on my head and I keep my head warm at night It's incredible how well I sleep now and you've seen, I'll, I'll talk about it. Well, I'll show you other tricks, two other tricks. You've heard about this trick. This is an algae bottle. So one of the tricks before going to bed, um, first of all, you gotta stay warm during the day. I mean, that's a whole other story. You know, you gotta try and stay warm. You're gonna get cold. So you need warm boots, warm clothing. I could do a whole episode on layering, uh, but I won't. This is more about sleeping right now. But one trick at the end of every day is warm up a bottle of, of hot water. Fill your Nalgene bottle with hot water. Make sure you've tested it. Make sure that it doesn't leak. And then put this hot bottle, a bottle of hot water at your feet. And that'll help quite a bit. The other little trick is these heat packs. You know, the, these are like $1.25 at the dollar store. You rip this open, you put it in your tent. Uh, or in your sleeping bag, you get a little bit of warmth, and that's that's really awesome. But here's another little thing, and I'll and I'll detail this inside the house um, later. But the good old-fashioned Yuko lantern, and the the Yuko lantern is a uh, dripless candle that's good for about nine hours. It's spring-loaded. There's a spring in there, and that pushes the candle up as it burns. And actually, there's a glass uh, um, globe in there, but I covered the glass with a cut up uh, Coke can. The reason I did that is because once you light this, God, even in the cold, once you light this, 
and you reinsert it in there, you actually have a heat source that's about 1800 BTUs. You know, considering that your household furnace is 50,000 BTUs, this is not going to heat your tent, but it will definitely look at the condensation that's occurring. So, what I will do is I will actually turn this. Now, the reason I put, sorry, but this will heat the tent and get rid of some of this condensation and the chill out of the air. Now, if you want to leave it on all night, you can. You can, uh, I, you know, you can, you should be careful. One way to do it is actually to run a rope or a string in, in your tent and then hang it somewhere. But if you leave it on for the next nine hours during the night, it will actually warm up the tent ever so slightly. It'll take the chill out of the tent. And the reason I put this um, Coke uh, uh, shield around it is just to make it black so I don't have light inside my tent because I sleep better in the dark. But uh, I'll, I'll do a, a little uh, close-up of this in the video uh, inside the house, but don't underestimate the ability that this has of um, taking the chill out of the tent. experiment. I don't know if it'll be enough to read, but this says minus, actually it's remarkable, it's only minus nine in the tent. So just being sheltered from the wind makes a huge difference. So inside the tent, before I lit the candle, it's, uh, it's minus nine, so it's definitely warmer than outside. And, um, that's something that you have to be prepared for. So if you're hiking and you're planning on going overnight, but somehow or other there's a storm that rolls in and it snows, don't be don't don't overlook the possibility of staying an extra day. So if I'm if I'm in camp instead of walking, because while you're walking you're gonna sweat. When you stop, you're gonna get cold. Your feet are gonna get cold. And if you get so cold that you can't function, you're gonna be in danger. So if you're go out and it becomes a lot colder than than the forecast don't don't be afraid to staying put and if you stay put if I stay put and I stay in this tent in this bag and I don't go anywhere I'm actually pretty safe you know uh, if it was as long as I and I might even have a fire and a food and things like that but inside the tent already it's a lot better than being outside in the full elements so that's the you know be prepared when you're going overnight that's the other reason when you're hiking in winter to bring uh, uh, the things weigh a little bit more it's it's more it's it's more important to be prepared and to bring extra food and be prepared to stay an extra night look at the test look at the when I breathe right now You know it's cold. I'm gonna let see if this lantern gets rid of some of, of this and warms it up. So apart from the usual stuff uh, that you bring in summer, um, more winter clothing, more food, um, tools, additional tools, the shovel, um, extra gloves, toque, lots of layers, and then uh, little booties that you can, uh, they come either in synthetic or uh, or down little booties they're kind of like down socks for in your tent if you wear down socks and you keep your feet warm boy everything's gonna be good one of the challenges when you get up in the morning everything's frozen uh, what I do is I tend to put a lot of things in my sleeping bag um, batteries some clothing a lot of things are in the sleeping bag in fact you can put a wet pair of socks in your sleeping bag and it will sort of tend to dry but um, Ideally, keep you know try and keep everything dry, and then for sure a good uh, headlamp or some sort because like I said the days are very very short so you spend a lot of time doing things in the dark. Some of you guys are gonna think I'm crazy, but it is actually quite a bit warmer in the tent. It is zero degrees in the tent. So zero degrees instead of minus 12 outside. So it's quite a bit of comfort to be just in the tent. Now, if I was in a sleeping bag, my body heat 
you know, you shiver at first when you get into the sleeping bag, but then you kind of get used to it and then eventually you settle in and I like I've been in this exact setup when uh, Evan and I went two weeks ago the first night was minus 16 to minus 20 it was cold I had deep body shivers during the night the second night where it only dipped to like slightly below freezing I was darn right we both agreed that we were hot during the night and uh, woke up in the morning comfortable i mean I, I could have slept in it was so comfortable well folks another quick informative video i hope you enjoyed it don't let uh, the cold discourage you and uh, you can certainly take your summer gear and add a bit of stuff and make it uh, work for you in the winter uh, i i tell you uh, to just try it go on a popular trail don't go too far you know try to go 10 kilometers in stay overnight the worst comes to worst is you have to stay up all night long by a fire. Um, make sure you got a fire. If you got firewood and you can make a fire, it'll be way more enjoyable. I know a lot of places also have trails with cabins. So uh, anyways, um, I'm gonna kick it up a notch. I've ordered a stove, a portable stove. Uh, with the Polk, I can carry a lot of gear and uh, I'm gonna do some hot tenting this uh, winter and uh, Look forward to those videos, folks. All right, enjoyed this. Uh, hope you did too. Uh, hit the big subscribe button, hit the like button, and uh, remember, just get off the beaten.